dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky. This is WYMT Mountain News Weekend Edition. A man is dead after being hit and killed by a car in Barberville last night. Good evening, I'm Connor James. And I'm Lacey Roberts. We now know the name of the man killed, 39-year-old Corey Allen Ty of Corona, California. This is video from the scene. Police tell us Ty was walking in the southbound lanes of US 25 near Save-A-Lot when a pickup truck struck him. He was then hit by another car traveling in another lane. Officials pronounced Ty dead at the scene. No other injuries were reported and the incident is still under investigation. Police say they responded to a crash involving a motorcycle and a car on Friday night. The crash happened on Highway 63 in La Follette. Officials say the motorcyclist was airlifted to a hospital with serious injuries. His or her identity has not been released. Police say they're still investigating the crash. Officials are investigating a reported drowning in Campbell County yesterday afternoon. Officials say it happened near Cedar Creek Bridge. They initially reported that someone jumped from Cedar Creek Bridge and was missing. However, new information suggests that that man jumped off a boat, hit his head, and did not resurface. Crews still have not found that man. And a Kentucky mine is expected to stop producing coal within one week. The mine employs around 200 people. Alliance Resource Partners LP said Friday that the Dotiki mine in Webster County will halt production starting August 16th. The company says it wants to focus production at lower cost Illinois Basin mines. The mine closing in Webster County originally opened in 1969. Webster County's Judge Executive Steve Henry says the county has already made budget changes in anticipation of the mine closing and employees will have an option to keep working. Officials have asked a bankruptcy court to halt the transport of black jewel coal in Virginia until the company's employees are paid. The Department of Labor filed a request to prevent around 37,000 tons of coal from being transported, worth at least $2.5 million. Now this comes after the department asked for the court to halt the transfer of coal from black jewel mines in Harlan County last week. And new tonight, we have learned that all former Black Jewel miners now have access to their 401k funds. In a release the company posted today, officials say the plan is terminated, which means miners who were locked out before can either get that money now or roll it over into an individual retirement account of their choosing. We will have more information about this story on our website. And an ATV ride is raising money for Black Jewel miners today in Knott County. Many riders are coal miners, retired coal miners, or people just wanting to lend a hand. WYMT's Marion Fletcher went along for the ride to learn more. Fastening seat belts, unloading trailers, and raising money. We stand up with one another and we help take care of one another. 92nd District State Representative John Blanton says... For more than one month, Black Jewel coal miners have not been paid for the work they have already done. The community is coming together to ensure that we raise money to help these miners through uh, this difficult time. A fundraising ATV ride to help these men at the Knott County Mine Made Adventure Park. I work for, for Revelation. We were working seven days a week and one Saturday night we came in and, and it was over. Judge Executive Jeff Dobson says he understands the struggle. It was heartbreaking for me at the time and several other men, and I couldn't imagine what these guys are going through. With no money and bills piling up. Electric bills, phone bills, they still keep coming. Many of these men have children. And school starting back, kids need clothes, kids need school supplies. All the money raised will go to the families affected. I don't know whether we'll take in $25 or 25000 here today. But whatever's tucking in, uh, we're going to give to these guys. Coming together to help. In Knott County, Marianne Fletcher, WYMT Mountain News. Now, organizers say they hope to see miners repay the money they have earned soon. And it is day two of the clothing drive at the Knott County Sportsplex. Hundreds of people have filled garbage bags with clothing, clothing like shirts, pants, and even men's suits. Organizers say they began with more than five tons of wardrobe pieces. Volunteer Jessica Merrill says she has always wanted to help with donations like this. I think it's amazing. It's really humbling to see that, you know, those things that I would do when I was a teenager, like they really do make a difference. And to see these people coming in here that are in need. Church of Christ of Latter-day Saints donated the items. 
Church of Christ of Latter-day Saints donated the items and the Christian Appalachian Project delivered it. If they have any left, volunteers will be giving it to local organizations to be distributed. As kids begin to head back to school, you see many of them with new outfits and shoes. Unfortunately, this isn't the case for all children. So a group of churches from several different states came together to try and help every child get that fresh back to school look. WYMT's Lauren McCourt explains. Upstairs looks like your average church service, but downstairs looks more like a shoe show. Well, we brought uh, about 300 pairs of shoes. With more than 600 pairs of shoes in the basement of Cutshin Bible Church. I'm trying to help out the people we can help out. Each kid that stopped by left with a brand new pair of kicks. We let them pick out what shoes they want. We just direct them in the right way. To, to get to see the kids come and, and pick out a pair of shoes like this guy's doing here, it's, it's, it's such a blessing to see that. All thanks to churches from across the southern United States. No matter how far we come, we're helping. That came together to help this little community in Leslie County. It's, it's all of us working together to uh, be the hands and feet of Jesus. Many of us may take the shoes on our feet for granted. Some of the children, that's the only pair they would get, like all year. But for most of these children, it's like watching a new kid open a toy. Finding their perfect pair of shoes is priceless. In Leslie County, Lauren McCourt, WYMT Mountain News. Pastor Little says he was very grateful for this year's turnout and hopes to have even more donations next year. And a new recovery center in Hazard had its open house this afternoon. The Rebound Center is a place for people who are battling addiction. It's for them to come and receive help from others who've been in their shoes. They have several counselors on site as well as several support specialists. We're from a national program, uh, which the grant comes through ARCO, and it's to provide uh, people with who are in early recovery or maybe, you know, suffering uh, from a drug addiction or substance abuse issue. It's for them to come and find like a safe haven or a safe place to where they can get away from that kind of lifestyle. The Rebound Center officially opens its doors on Monday. And today a funeral was held for a longtime Floyd County barber. Gary Wright died last Friday after health complications. He was known for cutting hair for 59 years, playing the piano and attending church regularly. Visitation for Wright was yesterday. His funeral was at the Irene Cole Memorial Baptist Church in Warrior this afternoon. Gary Wright was 85. We'll have more news coming up after the break.